in alumni lecture series. Today's lecture is about mastering the art of behavior by, uh, by our own LAU alumnus, Ihab Badawi. Ihab is a corporate advisor and leadership coach. He founded Interactive Business Gears, a firm specializing in organizational leadership through human capital optimization. He is a faculty member and director of training at Coach Masters Academy in the Middle East. He is a uh, professional certified coach. He helps companies and individuals grow, excel, and strive for excellence. With over 21 years of experience in international sales, marketing, and business development, he has managed cross-cultural teams in 58 countries. He is currently a board member of the ICF Lebanon chapter and of prominent com companies in the region. We have the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the alumni, LAU alumni, to provide the space and opportunity to be with you tonight. And actually to thank you all for taking the um, effort to join us. And this is a reflection of what we call in leadership as self-development and self-learners are leaders by, by nature. Uh, I would like to take your permission in two things. Number one is when we, um, actually when I'm, I'll be referring too much to leadership, but let, it, let us be clear that when we talk about leadership, we are not intending to talk about corporate leadership or only those who work in companies, okay? Because what we believe in at IBG is every one of us can become a leader. Leadership can be learned as long as the person himself believes in the aspects of leadership. So what we are going to discuss will touch base on leadership as well, and we'll explain why we are here and how we're going to tackle the topic. Uh, the second thing is um, I would like to also take your permission to make this session as interactive as can be, uh, because we believe in generative learning. And the difference is that when we come, we don't consider that we own the material or we know, or we are more knowledgeable than the people who are present. What we believe in, if we have a certain percentage of knowledge, and you have the rest of the knowledge combined, we can have much more and we can create much more. So uh, with that, definitely um, uh, we will be referring to you in certain aspects so that we can learn from your background, we can learn from your experience. Um, the reason why this topic was put on the table actually when I was uh, talking to Abdullah and, and the team and, and discussing what kind of uh, topic we'd like to discuss and this is, was listed as one of the topics for one main reason. Uh, by dealing with 58 countries and multi-cultures, um, running different, different operations with many people, we saw that there is a common aspect for most of the problems and issues. Then we extended that from the corporate life to the uh, personal life. And we looked at it and it all boils down to communication, to the way we deal with each other, and most importantly, how it boils down to ourselves. Okay, so mastering the art of behavior is actually is a topic that applies to our uh, normal world, not only in corporations as well. So before I start, I would like to ask you, what will come, first come to mind when you look at this picture? If we take one minute, look at it, reflect, and just tell me what comes to your mind when you just, the first impression that you get when you look at this picture. Who would like to share Rage, anger. Rage, anger. You are referring to the picture or you read, you read also what, what goes no, in? Okay, to the picture. Yes, it reflects rage. But what do you see even further? Impossible. Close. Patience. Patience. Patience as well. Against all odds. Against all odds. Strength. Strength. Self control. Concentration. Strategy. Well, you know what? It's all of this combined. Because you need strength, you need patience, you need self-control in order to face rage, to face whatever is coming around you. Okay? Who of us have faced a situation where he regretted it after one day or another? By only merely reaction. Just raise our hands. I would raise two. I would raise two because I have lots to regret, especially when... When I look back, and it happens and it happens all over. Um, recently, we were delivering a training, and I was asked, like, after definitely after running all, all of this material, and said, you know what? When you look at it at first glance, it's easy, okay? But come to apply it. And I answered, it took me three years, three years to 
I would say I wouldn't master, but I would say to become a level where I'm able to control my own emotions when it comes to the corporate world or in life. Three years. So for that, um, today we are going to discuss, first of all, take an internal journey. The journey is about exploring our own emotions. We we'll talk about knowing ourselves in relation to others. So why would we want to control ourselves only? Okay? Anybody would relate? Why would I control my own emotions? Please. What else? Take it to the higher level. To deal better, to behave better with others. To behave better with others. And what's my ultimate goal when I want to behave better with others? To be able to reach my objectives no matter what. Let them believe in me. For us to develop trust and influence. This is the ultimate. This is what you really need. You need people to trust you in order for you to be able to inflict influence on people. And influence doesn't mean, sorry? To live peacefully, to have proper yes. relations with Harmony others. With because it will reflect on you and we will see that in the second section. So, self-awareness in terms of social relations, the platinum rule. Anybody is aware of the platinum rule? Great, we will come to that. And I'm sure you will walk away, at least if we walk away with, as, as our policy says, if you walk away with one, one piece of information, one piece of information, it will allow you to create a shift in your life. This is what we advocate. I didn't introduce myself because I don't want to add on, on the beautiful opening uh, that was shared. But we run Coach Masters Academy, which is an academy that, that is run in 34 countries. And what we advocate in coaching is paradigm shift. If you are able to change your perspective about life or about the issue that you have or about an opportunity, you will be able to master what you want. You will be able to move with a better, uh, what we call transformational leadership. You will be able to transform your life. We will talk about how to profile people. Eventually we want to deal with people, correct? So how you would profile them? Are all people equal? No. Are all people the same in terms of behavior, in terms of personality? No. Definitely not. If you look at the same, the same house, you will see that brothers or sisters, they don't have the same character. How would we deal with them? The mistake that we do is we say, you know what, I want to be fair. I want to be good with every member. Okay, but this doesn't apply. Because if you want to be fair, you need to adjust the way you deal with people. But in order for you to start adjusting so that you gain the trust and thus influence. Let's avoid talking about business. Let's talk about relations. Why would I want to gain the trust of my family members. Anybody? Why would I, why, why would, would it be important for me to gain the trust of my children, for example? To position yourself. To position yourself. <coughs> to be looked at, to be looked at as a leader. To be a role model for them. To be a role model. Most of, yeah. So they would listen so that they would listen to me. There's a difference between inflicting power, showing your power. You have power, everybody knows that. All the children know that you have power, but it's not about power what you want. What you want is to establish trust and therefore influence. That's what leaders do. That's the difference between a forced manager who uses the power of the chair with an inspirational leader who can use inspiration, shared vision, but you will not be able to sell one idea, I guarantee you. One idea you will not be able to sell if you don't gain the trust of people. And this is what you want. You want to lead by respect. You want people to come to you so that they respect you and they will follow you. This is much easier for you. Try to do it. Try to see how you will be in two positions, for example. See a team where you are pushing so hard, so hard for you to be able to engage them, so hard for you to send them one word. And eventually, try to look at the other situation where your team trusts you. Can you imagine how much energy you save? You will be able to run smoothly. So let's start the inner journey, shall we? Great. One of the models that we work with is, is actually what we call evoking excellence. And evoking excellence in people, and as we said, and I took your permission to refer a little bit to leadership, by when we say achieving leadership, I'm not talking organizational structure. I'm not talking about being a leader at a company, okay? So at the heart of the model, at the heart of the model, you would see it starts at the center. It starts with emotional intelligence. So today, what we are going to talk about emotional intelligence. We're going to talk about the second level, which is 
social or uh, social intelligence. We're going to talk about the third level, which is conversational intelligence. Okay, and then we can talk about the leader coach, where you are able to coach people, and thus you will be able to get the best out of them. And this is the way we achieve leadership. Now, definitely, we'll not be able to cover all of this in our session today, but we are going to focus on those aspects which directly impact. Uh, communication which directly impact your behavior with others. So today, allow me to only focus on emotional intelligence and social intelligence, and we'll give you a tip on uh, conversational intelligence, because this is a topic that is not yet introduced properly, as we see in, the, in our nature. So again, I'm going to ask you, if you look at this picture, what would you see? How we perceive life. W would you read it out loud, please? Life is 10% what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. It depends on how I perceive things and I react. It's about perception, absolutely. Perception. Attitude, absolutely. When you perceive things, you formulate in your mind and you decide the way you want to react to things. And this is it. Tony Robbins, um, anybody familiar with Tony Robbins? No, no, definitely. You're a follower of Tony Robbins. <laughs> Tony Robbins is actually one of the best coaches in the world. And he's an inspirational uh, speaker, and he's well known in terms of motivational figures. What he says is, meaning is what you make out of it. Meaning is what you make out of it. Maneta, one thing is going to mean many things for many people, correct? I decide what's the meaning of it. Did it happen for you that you face two, the same similar situation two times in your life and you act, reacted differently? Can you give us an example? Mm -hmm. You learn, you control, you adjust, and then you force yourself to perceive it differently. Circumstances. Age. Age, maturity, experience. But you know what? I'm going to take it to the lowest level. If you face the same incident today, possibly even after an hour with another person, you might tolerate it differently. Take jokes, for example. If you find somebody on the street that you don't know and he wants to approach you with something that you consider inappropriate, but the same thing that he says from a friend, you would perceive it differently. Because you have decided to look at it differently. Correct or not? Hmm? Sorry? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're invading my privacy. This is what you think. And what's the difference? The difference is that you, internally, you have decided. Absolutely. But you have decided for you to perceive that action as something you would tolerate or not. Uh, also, it depends on the context. Like, whatever I tolerate, uh, uh, within a certain, in a certain group of people, maybe at work, I, I find it intolerable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thank you for this because we're going to refer to this and also with social intelligence. We're going to talk about how we people are of two different, uh, two different styles also at the same time. At work or wherever there is a social boundary or something that inflicts rules and regulations for us, we change, we change our perspective to things and how we deal with things. On the other side, we look at things in a different manner when we are at home. And that would be our natural style. So we'll talk about natural and adaptive style. Emotions. What does emotion mean to you? Feeling. Empathy. Interaction. Thoughts. What if I split E and motion? What it would it represent to you? You act according to how you feel. You know what? Because emotions are energy emotions. What drives us? 
Most of our reactive behavior is what? Most of our reactive behavior is from emotions. Impulsive, somebody said impulse. You know, even when you buy things, sometimes you buy them based on an impulse decision. That's why they put products next to the counter. Because you take an impulse decision immediately. And we call that impulse products, actually, in sales. Okay? But the idea here goes much deeper. Is that, that's why it's important to talk about, about emotions. That's why it's important to talk about emotional intelligence. Because emotions can drive our behavior. Anybody familiar with the, um, the statement that a thought becomes a word, a word becomes an action, action becomes a behavior or resembles a behavior, and eventually behaviors become habits. Just imagine with me this, and let's do a reverse engineering. So how would we be able to change our habits? لما حدا بيجي بيقول انه انا معود اعمل هيك طول عمري بعمل هيك شو بدي اسوي؟ By changing our mind. I start controlling my emotions. You know what? If you reverse engineer, if you reverse engineer and you go back, it all starts by changing your thoughts. But in order for us to start changing our thoughts, what would push us to think differently? You know, our brains is a complex thing. Your logical brain is completely different from your amygdala, okay? Because this is the center of emotions. And this will fight with each other, okay? And for you to be able to control that and to be able to start changing your thoughts more easily, you need to master your emotions. You need to control your emotions. Self-regulation, self-control, absolutely. So let me ask you, have you ever assessed your emotions? Your emotional intelligence. Anybody? You did? Which assessment? <coughs> Sorry. Great. Shall we do an exercise together? Yes. Okay, great. I'll ask your help, please. So we're gonna distribute for you an assessment. We're gonna distribute an assessment okay, with two pages. Okay, the first one has a set of questions, and the second paper has the score. Once all of you receive that document, okay, we'll walk you through the instructions. Huh?
बना है दिस वन यस so you're going to receive two papers one with the assessment so that you need to answer and the second one is the scoring sheet and i'll walk you through once you finish we'll take five minutes in order to fill it yeah And the good thing is that the numbers that we expected, and the show up is much better, which is which is great. That's a good thing. We'll send you whoever didn't get it. We're gonna send it by email if you don't get the chance to get it now. For those who have it, okay, we have set of questions. The same one. Okay, great. We're gonna pass. <laughs> Good. So the first sheet is with a set of questions. By the way, uh, what I advise you is because this is assessment for you. There's no judgment. There's no right and wrong. So answer it as candid as you can be, and be, be as candid as you can be. And the scoring sheet is where you're gonna reference what you answer and group them. And we'll talk about the six compartments in emotional intelligence. So we're gonna get only four minutes more for it because it has to be impulsive, you know? You have to answer immediately on it. Yeah, and you don't hold the grudge. Two more minutes. Anybody needs help in the scoring sheet? The scoring sheet references the questions that you ask as it groups them because every question relates to a compartment in the scoring sheet. So for example, this is question five. Okay, question five, you jump four, you write four. So this is the way you score. Them. So all of these are self-awareness questions. Okay? Okay, so you 
for this kind of pi. So you go to pi, uh, sorry, you know, pi is here. So you can put 4, you put 4. I don't put 4. <coughs> okay, so one minute. <coughs> so that we can brief you. But the most important thing is that you get the chance to take it with you and apply based on the brief that we are going to give you. <coughs> Motion higher than before. Hey, by the way, even if you ask yourself the same question after a period of time, be honest with it because maybe sometimes you slip, maybe you can control and sometimes you leave it. Yes, emotional, but then I can't say. No, no, no. IQ, mostly into IQ. Any emotional? Great. So let me ask you, whoever has finished the scoring, perfect. For those who finished the scoring, let me ask you, in which compartment of the, out of the six compartments you were surprised with the score? For example, you might think that you are self-aware, but you find that you're scoring too low, or you might find it the other way. You might think that you don't have self-confidence, but actually you found out that you have it. <clears throat> so in self-awareness, can you share with us, please? <coughs> Do it. <coughs> So for example, on self-awareness, her expectation was that she has a lot of self-awareness. But now the finding is showing her that the self-awareness is low. What does this mean? What does this assessment show us? Out of the six compartments that you have, these are the main compartments for you to be able to look at and work on your emotional intelligence. Like self-confidence, empathy, self-awareness. Ah, which one? You know, you, you, you are aware. No worries, no worries, no worries. Okay? Now, self-awareness. Why do we focus and why do we share such assessments? Okay? Why do we share such assessments? Because awareness is key. As part of our coaching, and uh, who's aware or who's more uh, knowledgeable about coaching recently? You have heard about coaching, correct? One of the good aspects about coaching and why it is gaining a lot of uh, not only awareness and implementation, but people are gaining belief in coaching is the way it transforms the mind. And in coaching, what we advocate is the first conversation because as you know coaching happens in a conversation it's a conversation between the person and the coach correct awareness conversation is key but let's focus on awareness first once we are aware of something it becomes at the front of our attention and this is where you become intentional about how you resolve matters i'll give you an example today you have done an exercise one question that you thought you knew differently about okay Realize it tomorrow or after tomorrow. The minute that you face an incident relating to this question is going to click to you. Usually it passes. Because now it's surfacing, it's in front of you. The idea is, what are you going to do about it? If you are to conclude the section of emotional intelligence, the most important thing is to tell you why emotional intelligence is so important. It provides self-awareness. So what? What about having self-awareness? Why is it important to have self-awareness? Who can share with you? To better control your behavior, yes? Self-respect and to let others respect the unknown and know their boundaries. Self-respect. To let, allow people to know their boundaries by me knowing my own boundaries. The idea is that it provides self-awareness. From self-awareness, we go to two main things. We go to self-management. Self-management, this is where you set yourself. This is where you become intentional in order to manage your emotions, and work on your adaptability. And we're going to talk about adaptability in the social, in the social intelligence. 
you are achievement oriented you become achievement oriented here and this when you become having self awareness this is where you say i want to achieve more in any aspect of my life this is, does not relate only to work it does not relate only to family okay in anything even if you want to control your emotions you become intentional the second area where it affects and impacts directly is social awareness this is where if you control your emotions you become self aware of how you behave you are intentionally empathetic what's the difference between sympathy and empathy empathy almost like Absolutely. Share the same feeling. The idea is that sympathy. Yes, please. Uh, please. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, empathy is putting yourself in the other person's shoes and make sure that he understands that you understand that you're doing this. Sympathy, uh, uh, it's like it gives the perception for the other person that you're. And he's a victim. You're feeling what I'm The best way, of, I, I like this example usually, and I always warn our, our, our coaching academy members by, by always talking about this. You know quicksand. Imagine somebody who is in the quicksand. Okay? There are two types of, of actions you can take. You either jump with the person into quicksand, and we, can, we always can imagine what will happen then. Correct? And, and the other way, is try to stand up short and look at the person, put yourself in the same situation, you will understand how he's freaking out and the way you want to deal with him, and then you can provide help. That's the difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is when you jump into the emotions. Okay, when they are devastated, you become devastated. You relate to your own situation, you relate to your own story, okay? And you become so much sympathetic. This will not be, you will not be able to help others because this will blind your actions, this will color your mind, your filter will not be clear. The other way is to become empathetic. Put yourself in the, in the, in the same situation, understand what's happening with the person, and then you can help him from higher grounds. That's the difference. The idea is social awareness. When you are able to pick up on social cues, when you are able to see what's happening around you, combined with self-management, this is where you are able to go to relationship management. This is where you are able to become an inspirational leader. This is where you become a good team member. That's why it's very important for us to discuss today, we start from the inside. We start from being aware who we are and what do we do. Any questions on emotional intelligence before we move on? We all okay? Good. The platinum rule. So I asked you this question before, and I said we will come to it, we will discuss it. But before talking about it, I would like to ask you, what's important about social intelligence this time? SR. Social intelligence. What's so important about it? Why are you even talking about it? Uh, being able to act in social settings, in appropriate acts in social settings, knowing uh, when to joke, when to uh, give advice, when to discuss matters that are relevant to the social situation. Absolutely. And when we know how to deal with others, what does this give us? Power. Successful relations. Trust. Closing deals, absolutely. Because people people do business with people they trust and only for those who trust, absolutely. Less conflict. And this is definitely what we want. Social intelligence is a learned ability like the emotional intelligence. It's a learned ability. It's something, don't ever say that this is me, this is my character, this is my personality. The idea is that everything can be transformed. Every single thing can be transformed. It's about the decision. You take a decision, you are mindful about it, but you have to take the journey. You have to face the reality. You cannot but be objective, and then you can achieve what you want. So it's about building relations successfully, but we cannot do that before knowing ourselves and starting to learn how we profile others. We all agree when I ask you that yeah. even brothers or sisters are not the same character, correct? Great. So when we deal with strangers, what do we do? We need to profile them, we need to know what character or what style they are, correct? Great. But 
the importance of, of having a high social intelligence has many uh, positive impact on our life. And the science is, especially neuroscience, is, is advancing a lot. Okay, and they are seeing the benefits of us having or mastering social intelligence as well. It, it relates to positive relations, reduces stress, okay, provides positive hormones within the body, which will allow you to have a healthier life. Loneliness on the other side, and I'm not talking about, let's, let's be clear, because we had this discussion before with someone, we are not talking about being extroverts being better than introverts, okay? Both are characters, both draw energy in order for them to move forwards. Introverts are people who draw their own internal energy by being by themselves, okay? Reading, for example, or just having an internal journey, journey with themselves. So they draw energy from themselves. Extroverts, on the other hand, they draw energy from people. But both of them can have a high social intelligence. So we're not talking about here loneliness in the terms of extroverts and introverts. We're talking about loneliness in the sense that you isolate yourself from society always. And that has a, a negative impact. So the eyes are blind when? Let's use this blind when the mind is blind, correct? So what does it mean? What does it mean when your eyes are blind or useless? They don't see when your mind doesn't see. What does this mean? You have to? You have to think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, pre-judgment about someone, like if you pre-judge someone, uh, about something like you will keep this idea in mind and they will keep you will keep treating him uh, so, yeah, will I love this I love this you know what this she's talking about prejudgment actually this goes this, this what you said takes this to the higher level prejudgment actually changes and alters everything that your eyes see okay alters everything you just preset your mind that this person is not good what do you yeah. expect what do you expect when you're sitting in a meeting when somebody he colors his mind. Are you familiar with this statement? His mind is colored already. discussion. Already he's colored and predetermined that these are the facts. This is the person. This is wrong. Okay? Your eyes will only see certain things, but the idea is, and the treasure comes with what? The way you interpret them. The way you interpret them. You take a person to a country. Sometimes one will tell you it's an ugly country. The other one is going to tell you what? I saw beauty. They saw the same area, but somebody decided to see the beauty in something. And this is where, when we deal with people, this is where we decide the way we see people, with the way we perceive their behavior, the way we perceive their characters. So we ask, yes. 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 Sorry. Prejudice? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Anything that affects the way you look at things objectively and the way you look at people. So we asked about the platinum rule, great, we said we're gonna come to it, perfect. But let me ask you before that, in order for us to introduce the platinum rule, anyone familiar with the golden rule? What's the golden rule? Treat others the way you want to be treated. Who has a different interpretation about the golden rule? So you all agree that the golden rule, and we have been raised this way. Keep that in mind, and try to imagine what would be the platinum rule. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> They are saying that treat people as they want to be treated. Who would agree? Let's do a poll. Who would agree? No. You wouldn't. Who, those who do not agree, tell me. Active listening. It's just being there, attending to the people's uh, speaking, to the, what they are speaking. It's just being with them and uh, um, listening, really listening to them, uh, not just. Um, 
um, searching for answering what they are asking or what they are speaking about, attending to their uh, to their talk. Perfect. I love this. So she mentioned something about. Uh, sorry, what's your name? Basima. Okay, Basima said that it's about active listening. Active listening is actually one of the most important things that you will be able to start dealing with people if you do it intentionally. So what's the difference between active listening and listening? We all know listening is, is, is important. Listening is 80% is of communication. But what does mean active listening? Absolutely. You set the intention to filter out the content that you are hearing and you highlight the main points and try to listen objectively, trying to understand the perspective of the person and from where this is coming from without judgment, with no filters at all. It is as it is coming and based on the person perspective, his perspective, it's my, not my perspective. It's manipulating. No, no. It's not about manipulation, but it's about positive impact for trust. Let me build on what you said. Let me build on what you said to put it in the, in the right context. So, I'm going to explain the same thing. The idea is that the way when you change your language, when you change your language to put the person that you are talking to, this is not manipulation, actually. Adaptation. You know what? This is adaptation. Yeah, adaptation. Ah, okay. This is how you gain trust. If you are able, when you talk to people, to understand being attentive, and this is active listening, because I'm attentive to the way you talk, to your learning style, and then I adapt my way to your style. I adapt my words to your style. Absolutely. So this is the platinum rule. This is how the platinum rule recently took over the golden rule. Every one of us was raised and you know, treat others the way they want them to treat you. Okay? And this is where the problem starts. Who said that if I want to be funny, everyone will accept that? At the same time, here now, some people will accept my approach, some people will not accept it, for example, because they have different learning styles, they have different languages. You try to adapt with interaction. Us with such a beautiful big audience, we try to interact just to see the, the concept of group learning, and that's why we talk about generative learning. The idea is you have to pick up those cues, and you have to treat people the way they want to be treated. Who knows how many styles or how many personalities exist in, in life, or how they are profiled? Five? Sixteen? <laughs> Who said? Sorry? Nine? Sixteen? 60. 60. Wow. Four main. This is beyond. Four. 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 Mainly four. Why four? Four behavioral styles. Four behavioral styles. Do you agree with this section? We are silent a little bit. Just contribute. That's right. Two. Four. What? Why do you insist on four? Three. Because the brain is. You know what? The answer is all of you, all the references that you have are correct. Okay? There are different theories, there are different scholars who profile people differently. Okay? Mainly the most important uh, the two things that profile people that are mostly known for most are what MBTI and this. Okay? But today we are going to talk about four. No matter how we change them, no matter how we put them, no matter how we construct them, the idea is that how it trickles down. Trickles down to what? I'm trying, I'm not being, uh, I'm being conscious about the time. So, yes. Some people don't know what they really want. Uh -huh. What's good for them? What's good for them? Can you elaborate more? In terms of what do they want as, as how to behave? Okay. Great. Perfect. Thank you for bringing this up. Why do you think some people don't know what they want in terms of an approach? How do they want to behave? How do they want to relate to others? Because they are not self-aware. The confidence stops them from moving forward, for sure. Okay? Fear. 
fear sometimes stops us from, from changing part of our personality or the way we behave with others. And maybe a negative, uh, negative outlook or a negative... They have a negative outlook to life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having a negative outlook to life or negative outlook to others actually stops or de deters our mind from taking action in order to move to the aware level, from the uh, subconscious unconscious to the conscious. They stay in the comfort zone, absolutely. Absolutely. This is another way of saying, you know what, I like it here, why should I do the effort? Why would I move? Why would I take action? So to discuss it. Being careless, actually being egoistic. This is the way I am. People have to adapt to me. I don't have to adapt to anybody. Do you know such people? Yes. <laughs> Are there some here? <laughs> Her ex is one. Her ex is one, that's why she dumped it, right? Great. So the platinum rule has certain constructs. Yes. Sometimes we can you elaborate on this because can you give us an example? Because I will be able to build on it. Yes. Perfect. I love this. I love this example. So she said, what, what, what's her name? Hanan. What's Hanan saying is that we cannot always accept to treat people the way they want to be treated. And she gave me just a simple example about, for example, terrorists. Okay? The idea here is how we treat, how we communicate with those people. The idea is not to accept what they accept. The idea is not to help them to do what they want to do. To treat them the, the way they want to, treat it, to, to, to be treated actually relates to the way you want to communicate with them. And communication is we need to communicate with such people, for example. But how can I communicate with such a personality if I don't try to understand why and how do they behave? It starts by knowing the behavior. You have to notice the behavior. So the first thing is understanding, the second one is identifying, and the third one is adapting. Okay, how do you adapt to the person who's always right? A person who's always right? Always right. Keep that in mind because we're gonna do an exercise, but keep that person in mind. Keep that person in mind. Well, just adapt to the idea that he's always right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to let him go, so no. We're gonna teach you differently. We're gonna teach you how to deal with it. So understanding. First, we understand our own style. This is the most important thing. We have to understand ourselves in order to know the way we want to adapt. So what's the, what's the importance about knowing about you and I have no consciousness about who I am? The way I like to talk, the way I like to behave. What's going to happen? I will not know how to adapt. So the starting place is you. Uh, in the last section, remind me to discuss that, but here it's about knowing, all right. So he believes in different beliefs, okay? And you are in a conversation together. The problem happens is when we clash in that conversation, correct? Why do you think you clash? We'll apply it, we'll apply it to anything. This applies to every single rule in life. Because there's no common ground. Why do you think there's no common ground? I would like to ask Randa. She's saying that two people are clashing because they have different beliefs. What type of conversation they will have? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why I'm asking Randa just for you to know because she's she's well versed in conversational intelligence. The way people talk. They take certain types of conversations, and these people are positional. Everybody wants to defend his own point of view. What will happen after that? Is anybody listening? Is anybody actively listening? Let's say, for example, I'm saying, this is what we're going to find out now. 
This is what we're going to find out. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. If you look at the emotional intelligence with assessment, it has a compartment about self-confidence. Why do you think? If I don't have enough confidence to stand in front of you and learn something new, maybe somebody is more versed than me in certain areas. If I am in a positional situation, I know what I know, how do you think the conversation is going to be? I need some confidence to accept that. So I need to set my mind that I'm coming here to meet 150 beautiful minds, approx, okay, and with different personalities, and to accept, you know what, somebody's gonna know more than I know. Do I have to stand on my position and prove that I know? Can you imagine what discussion is gonna happen? That's why, instead of having one-way learning, we say generative learning. The learning that is gonna come out of this room is much bigger than the things that I brought with me. Because that was only my mind. This is what I understand. But together, we're going to build more. How did I do that? Or how did I position myself? I said, I do not want to have a positional discussion. I'm not going to hold my grounds on you. I'm going to be open. And this is how you change your conversation. Most of communication is not about what you say. I'm receiving signals that I'm running late on time. So, by the way, do you mind if we go 10 minutes more? No. no. Thank you. <laughs> so the idea is, the idea is that it is about how you say things more than what you say. Now, from where is this coming? I'm sure most of you know about body language. You know about body language, okay? Who can tell me how much body language constitutes out of communication? 60%, 80, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 
Now I know about you. What do we do? Compromise. Adapt. Compromise. Compromise. Part of adaptation. Finding the common grounds and thus adapting our style. Communicate. Absolutely. Once I take a decision, I want to communicate with you. I need to understand the way you behave and what character you are so that I know how to communicate. And yes, the idea is to communicate and increase communication. And but increase based on quality communication. And to, 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 to determine the goals. Nice thing, hold to that thought. We're going to come to it with the characters. Absolutely. The, the minute you take a decision, the minute you take a decision that I want to adapt your style to the other person's style, is the minute actually you are respecting the person. First, you, have you are respecting the person and you are experiencing self-confidence because you're not holding your grounds anymore. You're not saying that I am the only person who understands and who knows. First, you have to you have to create room for communication. Then start to be less defensive, try to look positive at the positive aspects of the person, try to point out what you appreciate of them. I love this. I love this. It's brilliant. Because you need you know what? You need to identify the person, then you will be able to design the space and the space of the discussion we need, and then you will be able to take a strategy in your mind the way you want to communicate with. So great. Shall we identify the characters? Yeah. Great. Shall we give you a, uh, um, by the way, just let me be clear. Uh, we base our learning on DISC, and DISC is one of the tools that we use. We use in our coaching and in our assessments. We use other tools as well, like the MBTI. But for this, for the purpose of this uh, presentation, it's based on DISC. DISC profiles people, how they behave, and it char characterizes the people in terms of four uh, behavioral styles. Okay? So in all, it's, a, it's a long process. But are we able to know a fast track way to profile people? Yes, and this is what we're going to share with you. So we said that people do business with people who trust, they trust. Why do you think they trust some people and they don't trust the others? You know, do you know the concept of mirroring? Yes. Who knows it? Who would like to share? Yes. We didn't hear anything. Okay, so she's saying that if you are really leader, you uh, try to reflect what others want or do. We'll see. They want to see their reflection in your mind. Yeah. Reflection go, in your mind. Definitely, they have to see that you are listening and reflecting absolutely. But yes, but they gaze. So they give you this look that I'm thinking. You know? <laughs> Actually, they are thinking. <laughs> Body language. When we mirror the body language of the other person, Beautiful. this is how we are relating to him, Beautiful. her to her. But Thank you need to, to mirror the positive body language, not the negative ones. One of the latest findings in business context, but it applies also to the social context, is that when people try to be positive even when they are talking about something negative, they did a study and they measured what's the outcome. Okay, so if you are, let's say, relaxed face and with a little bit of a smile, not being gimmicky about it, okay, and you pass hard messages, they tested the impact after and they saw that it lands softly on people. You know why? Because when you are behaving in a certain way constantly, people tend to mirror you. Now let's take it to the higher level. Try to mirror other people the way they are, the way they talk, their gestures, their language, their style. And you will see, they will see you as somebody who, is, who looks familiar, hmm? and they will start to accept you. Use their language. Try to listen actively. Pick up on their words, and try to use it in your words. This is in all conversations. All types of things. Target. Target. Ah, hello, whole person. Hello, we'll see when you profile him. Let's see. You build the rapport, absolutely. This will help you to build the rapport. And for you to be building a rapport, that means you establish the relationship. You have to break the barrier. 
Absolutely, and this helps you in breaking the barrier. You listen, you see the words that are crossing, you highlight a few points that they mentioned, and you articulate it back in your question or in your statement. They will pick up that you use their words indirectly in the subconscious, they see you up, he comes from the same background. And actually you don't. Okay? So let's see the grid. Okay? I will I come to that. So the grid, to be able to profile people, the best way we will be able to do it very fast, if we talk about two grids. The openness grid and the direct grid. Okay? And we'll start with the openness grid. What does the statement says that people who are okay or have a degree of self-disclosure? What does it mean? Read the statement on the top and try to tell me what does it mean to be open in terms of discussion. People are rated either open or guarded, closed. Raise your voice, let everybody learn from you. Okay. They share their emotions, they are open about sharing their emotions. This is one way to put it, yes? What else? They are usually open about asking questions to receive information, yes? They are transparent. They have nothing, usually they have nothing to hide, except super confidential issues, absolutely. So, we talk about the openness grid. Here being highly open, and at total opposite being guarded. The highly open people have no issue to share with you personal information of some things that passed with them before they go into the discussion. Okay, they are easily um, available that when they see you, for example, they relate, they share with you some personal information. Okay, if you talk it in a, let's put a take another example. In a business context, in the relations, usually in family relations, take it to the higher level, when fear rules and regulations. Open people usually, when they go into a meeting, what would they start their discussions? weekend. They share with you things before they jump in. They want to build the relationship the way they see that this is nice and they accept. So some people are open. On the other hand of the grid is guarded people. Guarded people are closed. That does not mean they are better or worse, but they don't like to share with you information that is private. Coming to talk about business, why the heck would I tell you that what I've done in the weekend? This is personal information for me. So imagine an open person, a very open person, dealing with a very guarded person. What will happen? Can you imagine going to close a few million deals with a person, with a client, sitting across the table? It's so guarded. Jump into the issue. So what do you expect after 10 minutes of talk? What he will do? He's going to shut down. He's not going to even talk. But you have to know that. Both of them, they're going to meet midway. Yes. I think in partnership, yes. it's very good to have uh, uh, balance. one open balance, Absolutely. one open and one guarded. Absolutely. Absolutely. It depends who needs the other. It depends who needs the other. Because if that guy is coming to strike the deal, is the open guard. And the one who assigns the is the guarded guard. Guard. He, has, he has to make the compromise <coughs> to jump. He said, let's jump to the subject. Okay. I love this. I love this. Is an open Hopefully he wants the guarded, and he knows about adaptability. Okay, what will this person have to do? He will have to adapt, and thus he will get the deal signed. Same thing with the guarded, when he goes to the guarded, when he goes to the guarded, when he goes to the guarded, he wants them now, he wants to resell what he bought. What he is going to do, if he knows about adaptation, he's going to be more open. Sorry. Remember the incident, absolutely. I have a question. Yes. But even with the guarded people, sometimes you have to the key from where to open this, uh, to enter them, yeah, to enter their thought, their mind. Yes, absolutely, and adaptation is the key. You know why? Because when you start talking their language, their style, they will open up. They will feel that you are a little bit close. They will not see you on the other ground. Look, the open, Jamaat open, Muhammad Ata Mahal. You know, he's gonna see you that you are close, easy to talk to, easy to open up. He will start opening up gradually. Great. 
So we got the open side and the garden side. Let's look about the direct. What is the difference between being direct or indirect? Straight to the point. If he's extremely direct, straight to the point. Yes. The Nullah Fudawaran, specifically when he deals with information. So imagine a person, and I think the Salon, Shaman Akibi business, okay? I think the Salon, this Al Konsuad, okay? He's a direct person. We sugarcoat the answer. We sugarcoat the answer to an extent that we cannot get the answer by anymore because there's so much sugar around it, okay? What do, what do you think he will think? He or she? He didn't get an answer. He didn't get an answer. So this is how and he thinks that you are being evasive, and you know what? It goes to an extent that he will think that you are lying. Damon, the Makadum, a Shah Samuera, Samuera. But so sometimes, you know what? He's not, he's actually being political, he's being diplomatic, like all the other better sense. He's being extra diplomatic. He thinks that you are as sensitive as he is. Okay? Because indirect people are a little bit sensitive. This is when we see the Asta. Okay. So we said we're going to say or know how to profile people. Okay. So the first thing on the grid, we said guarded and open, correct? Okay? Now, usually guarded people, to take an extra tip, so if he is a ta'atat ma shakhs, but ma ba'arat, is he open or guarded? What is another thing that can, I can pick up the clues of a person? Usually guarded people are task-oriented. You can talk about the contact with the football module. خبرني الموضوع. Let's move. Numbers. Bravo. You started here. Remind me to say why here. This is here the number zone. Okay. So either we show them the task, the topic, or we show them the relations. Open people, they like to build the relations. Guarded people, they don't care. Just let's talk about the business. Let's talk about the topic. حتى بالبيت إذا كان في واحد سوبر جاردد. Okay, when he, even his children, I'm going to talk about it, but let's talk about it from the end. What's the topic of what happened in the school? From the end, did he get it or did he get it? I'm not talking about it, but I'm talking about it, and I'm talking about it, don't, don't even go there. And this is where we start breaking the relationship with the kids. Because we think, we think we are more important. We think that our time is more valuable than their time. We do not come halfway. Any question on the first grid? Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's when you do not hold your grounds between sheep. This is when you adapt. Absolutely. And we all know sometimes, look at an unguarded uh, personality or style. Sometimes, and that's what I'm telling him is that this is where you gain adaptability and you even adapt yourself to certain situations. Absolutely. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. What she's saying is that here at this level, you should know how to adapt, but not to change the other person. This is the most important thing. This is where, as we said, we move from positional grounds. to communicate and respect the way he deals. Because none, none whatsoever is better than the other. None, absolutely. Even wherever you want. كنا عم نحكي بال بالpartners يكونوا of different characters actually on a steering board usually what we do is we profile them and we match we need diversity and now I will talk how and why efficiently بكون بالنص absolutely اللي بيقدر to move across all of these absolutely so on this grid yes yes please do I'll just, I'll just reply back. Okay, this is, this is, this is, this is nice and this is good. So, let me see if I get you right. So, we're talking about when you talk with open people, sometimes they do not, they are not genuine. 
they don't come across as 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 genuine people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the idea is that even if they're pretentious, you have two two options in this case. If you get the chance to deal with them, to deal with them more frequently, okay, then you will be able to gauge their true personality and you can adapt. If you do not have the chance, you have to presume and to act as they presuming that this is this is who they are. They are open a little bit. But give your time, give time, give time to yourself to know them. And how do you know them? You know, as we are conscious about the time, I'm gonna give you the tricks directly. You ask questions. Questions. Have anybody known lead, leading through questions? Yes. Yes. You have heard it, huh? Yes. Why do you think questions are important? Because you get insights. Because you get information. You steer your way how? By having by being more aware. Absolutely. And awareness comes in a conversation through information. And that's why people who have information are usually more powerful. They have know everything about anybody and they know how to pull what they want. That's why information is key. So when you are communicating with people, like when we are in business negotiations, what we do is actually definitely I don't talk as much as I'm talking. For sure. Okay? What we do is I take it even further. They say 20, 80%, 80% listening, 20% talking. And through talking, what I do is like I go 10 to 15% asking questions and 5% answering. Because I want to gain control. The way I gain control, I steer discussions. Yes? Now with social media, some research. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you see how, how genuine or fake it is, but definitely social media is, is allowing you to know about people more and more. If you are dealing with genuine people, this is a nice question. She said, how would you profile people if they gained knowledge about how to adapt? Okay? The good thing about it, if they are genuine people, okay, you would love this because they will adapt to you and you will adapt to them. Yes. That's something good. Yeah. If they are not genuine, then you need to master profiling people and look for detailed cues. But eventually, those people will make it easy for you to communicate. Now, because I'm adamant about the time again, I'm gonna explain all the future slides on this slide so that we gain, gain, gain time and we don't delay, okay? Great. So, when we have a task-oriented person, highly on task, highly on direct, we call them dominance, in the dominance zone. What do you think dominance character are? Okay, bad managers. Let's say that <laughs> yeah, bosses, bosses because they use their power. But if we're talking about leadership, no. leaders do not do yes. that. They don't act with them. Yes. They, they act with authority. Yes, they tend to lean to authority. Um, let me qualify what I said before. I'm going to add it again because Akid, Akid, part men Nahal, Akid are dominant people. None of these characters are better than the other. Yeah. All of us have the four, but we show one more than the others. Yes. Okay? Uh, dominant people, usually they lean more to forcing their decision. Okay? They, are, they talk fast, by the way. They act fast, and they are direct. Let's go for the kill. Let's take a decision. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. The other one is the influencer, influencers. Who can tell me who are the influencers? They are direct people, they are very fast. Okay, they act fast, they, they talk fast, but they are open. Usually leaders, absolutely, Sama, leaders tend to show and try to resemble I more, because I is about dealing with being open, correct or not? Being open, that means I like to connect to people. Okay, I'm extremely on the extrovert side. Okay, third character is the steadiness. They like relationships, they are open, they talk easily to others, they open up, they share with you details, but they are slow and indirect. What do you think this kind of character is? Totally the opposite of the dominant because 
They are on the slope side, they are the fast track, and they are open while the dominant is definitely. So what else? What else can we see other than they are opposite? Absolutely. Good. They are confirmers. They try to confirm with the crowd. What else? Um, they can have leadership positions, but usually, Shaman will follow. She said followers, okay? Usually they listen and they might change their mind. They are more into, they are taking democracy to the ultimate level. I will not give my decision until I hear everyone of you what they have to say. But can you imagine if I want to take a decision? Huh? And I have to listen to everyone in this room, what will happen? What will happen? We're gonna be slow, we're not gonna move. We have to wait every single person, we're gonna move too late. The third one is the conscientious. Who, who, who told me about the numbers? You said the numbers. Why do you think conscientious is the biggest band of numbers? I'm at the wrong. Do you have some information about it? Finance, accounting, finance. Usually, accounting and finance people. What are they known to? Numbers. Yeah, numbers. What should we have about numbers? They analyze. They like details. They dig deep. Correct. They assess this, and usually those who assess this, they take their time in assessing this, correct? Yeah. They make decisions based, based on their decisions. They base all their decisions on facts. They do not take relations into consideration yeah. when taking a decision. They call them number cruncher. Number cruncher. They crunch, and they crunch, and they crunch. So, these people are known to be on the slower side, and they are guarded. They are not interested to talk about other issues than the task on hand. They are task oriented. They want to take a decision. Let's crunch the numbers. Give me the facts. Give me the details. Okay. So as we said, for the sake of time, we're not going to cover the um, uh, the um, slides that are coming after this in social intelligence, but I'm going to explain them here. Dominant people tend. Yes. Yes, and when you ask them to take a decision or to take an op yeah, like, for their opinion, they wouldn't give it to you immediately. They will have to go back to the numbers, they have to crunch the numbers again, and then they would share their opinion or their decision. That's the difference. Again, I'm going to qualify that. Okay? All of us have the four traits. That's why none is better than the others. And if you want a balanced ground, we have to have the four people. Okay? But I'm going to give you a live example so that you make it clear. The dominant person wants to take a decision now. He doesn't want to look at the facts. He just wants the summary, and he wants to move. Usually, they are risk takers yes. from one side. And they don't go into details, absolutely, for sure. OK? Influencers, they like to build the relationships. OK? So imagine a dominant person wants to take a decision immediately, doesn't look at the facts, while having an eye person with them who loves to connect with the people, but also doesn't look at facts because he wants to move fast, okay? But they start to balance each other. Hey, the mabdi ta'ata ma'al-alam, let's take a decision. This person comes and says, you know what? Let's connect to people. So I'm gonna pass the decision, Hanam the decision. But let's connect to the people and sell them the decision button. So let's connect first. So balla shi siram a little bit of balance, okay? The S, soft, don't rock the boat. Don't take too many changes. What he will do is he will add value by telling us, you know what, let's slow down. You are too fast. You are moving too fast. Let's slow down a little bit. So here, this person will add a little bit of democracy and he's yet open. Okay? What do you think the C will add? He will say, you know what, I'm going to take your decision. Great, I've done my homework. These are the facts. These are the areas we need to discuss, and you can take an enlightened decision. All right? So the four people can add value to each other. The problem is, and this is what we are talking about, if any one of them are talking to each other and all of them are holding their ground, this is where the clash happens. And that's why we need to profile people when you talk to people. So let's see, and let's test if it is landing correctly. We talked about the grid, and we said we can profile people, correct? So if I'm talking to a person, and our ma'atma will need to open, and he's easy to talk to, and we can talk social things. So when we pull? So we go by elimination. 
50%. Now we know 50%. بلشنا نقرب about his personality, correct? So we say he's open, so he is either an S or an I. But we don't know for sure, correct? So we talk more to the person. And the more we talk, we see him if he's fast or not, if he's direct or not. Once we know that he's direct and we know he's open, what do we know about him? Influencer. He's an influencer. And let's say you are a dominant character and you are dealing and you need to deal with this person. What do we do to deal with that person? How do we adapt? I let him feel that he's taking the decision. No. No. I let him feel a little bit that this is a shared, not a forced decision. Not a forced decision that he's taking indirectly. And I do whatever I want indirectly, but I let him feel that he's taking the decision. It's not about that. You include, yeah. you reduce your D character a little bit. What else? What else? Look at the differences between them. Ask questions, let them be involved. Absolutely, absolutely. What else? You move along the line, how? <coughs> so you relax a little bit your defenses. You gear yourself that you are open to talk about relationship issues or, or something that is outside the topic. Okay, you move fast, yes, but you try to include them. This is how you migrate from the D character to the I character. Okay, great. Let's say that a person who's guarded doesn't want to talk except about this, the discussion or the topic that you are bringing on the table. Okay? But he likes to look at details. He likes to take his time. Where would you put him? Conscientious. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being conscientious. These people have high spirit towards their um, ethical uh, work principles, for example. Great. And let's say I'm an influencer. I'm a total opposite. How do we deal with that? I'm an influencer. I want to deal with a conscientious person. What do I do? I show him uh, how, how, how much he's making as a profit. Uh, I show him facts. facts. What's in it? Yes, definitely. Yes, what else? You slow down. I slow down a little bit. And I don't have to mingle. Share your experience in this moment. Involve involved with their decision. I don't have to mingle with them. I don't have to tell them that it's now, يعني ما ببلش الحديث بمعنى آخر, ما ببلش الحديث trying to build a relation from the social aspect. ببلش معهم بالnumbers. Let them discard a little bit, open up a little bit, and then we can build a relationship. Just to give you an example, I, my character, my result in this is I, C. Why do you think I have both characters? And they are both high. Why do you think? خلص صوت بروفيشنالز بالكريت شو يعطي تاني شو المشكلة فيي هات هات شو هات هات شو مشكلتي شو مشكلتي بالحياة مرة اي مرة سي ضايع مرة هون مرة هون بيوتيفول وات ما سمعنا they go together not necessarily we did not hear sorry what sorry ايه هلا انا مخبى مخبى الجواب لحتى انتوا تعطوني صح So, so if I want to make a right decision, what, what do you think? And a high I character don't make good decisions? They do? Okay, my character is extremely I. I like to connect with people. I draw my energy from people. I love to have everything in a social context, everything, even business. However, the minute you say that there is responsibility about others, about business of others, I immediately jump and bring the sea hat, and I say, bring me the facts, okay, so I connect with you, but you want the decision, bring me the facts, let's go into detail. Mm -hmm. I have both characters. You start as an influencer, absolutely, and I try always to portray it, absolutely, because I see that this is benefiting me with others, I'm able to adapt with them. When I'm with a dominant character, and I have worked with many dominant people, huh? and I left the corporate world because of this, but, when I deal with dominant people, what, what did I used to do? Did I, do you think that I said, okay, خلاص, I'm going to go personality and I'll accept everything they have? No. Absolutely not. But the idea is that I come in and I'm prepared that I have a dominant character. You have to absorb the character. Okay, characters. absolutely. And I have to involve them in the decision. You slow down, that you want to invest in slow down, and it's like your profile. Absolutely. I, I remember I had a, a big plan to launch a big project in India, and we had the board, and everybody was against it. 
and the two يعني أكثر ناس كانوا عم بيعارضوا هذا المشروع كان one is a high dominant character by far extreme and the other is our CFO who is extremely on the sea side يعني ما عنده مشكلة إنه عند خمس سنين عم ندرس الأران and who cares to launch ما فرقاني معه and I was in the commercial world sales and marketing business development we really we need to go to the kill let us move the minute I went to the meeting I've been working with them I know I know their characters if I stand my grounds and I say okay the CEO likes me Okay, this is what we're gonna have about it, fine. But the idea, you know what? I go with a balanced presentation. Manna Tawiri Kheer, and the visa. The character, visa delivery. Okay, so I started immediately with the Kheer. This is India, this is the opportunity, this is what we're gonna do, and this is gonna how much we're gonna profit. So, dominant Akhad Yabadwiye, C chef, no fee ma'amul homework. So C started asking questions, you know what? Let's go to the annex. So I opened the annex. بس اتخيل انا فيت ببورينج برزنتيشن ببلش بالارقام بس هي وود لاف ات وات دو يو ثينك ذا دي ويل دو؟ هيز غونا موف اواي فروم ذا ميتنج اميديتلي هيز غونا انفلونس ذا سي اي او از ويل سو ذاتس ادابتيشن ام نوت مانيبيوليتنج اني بادي ذا نمبرز ار كوركت اند ام دوينج وات اي بيليف ويز ماي فول فلاتش باشن بس ذا ايديا از ذات اف اي دونت جيت ذير سبورت وات دو يو ثينك ذا بورد غونا دو؟ ذير نوت غونا فوت فور ذا بلان كوركت اور نوت؟ ذاتس واي ادابتيشن از كي That's why with time, it requires practice. But the idea here, again, I'm going to say, even if you don't take this, even if you don't know about the assessment, if you know how to read the cues from people on this grid, you are able to know what kind of character they are. And be intentional. Be intentional in the way you want to talk to people and adapt. You wouldn't. This grid, this grid applies to people you don't know. You are talking to them. And you're finding out. Tab great. What does this mean? Are you taking risk? Akid, dealing with people you don't know. But at least the cut of risk is a demand side, risk of five minutes. Then I know them, then I adapt, and then I gain their trust. Any questions on the grid? Which of the four is prone to adapt faster? Which ah, this is interesting. This is interesting. So the question is: which of the characters is more inclined to adapt faster? What do you think? S. S. The influencer, S. why? He's a leader. Why? He's a leader. S. The S. Because of the democratic factor. So, the influencer is open and he can accept people. Masbouh? Okay. Well, S can accept people. Fine. Let's put it in a context, Anna. The influencer likes people. He likes to party, he likes to, to build connections. But where is it moving? Where is it moving? Bishop D character, very clashy. Is a whole man know he's not mastering adaptation, he will clash. For sure. But if all of them have adaptation, all of them are equal. Because they all know how to manipulate the grid. They know how to adjust. And that's why we are saying no one is better than the other. None at all. Sometimes you need D to be on board. You need a decision. تخيل السي از كرانشينج نمبرز اول داي والاس عم يسال العالم شو رايك شو رايك ليك بتعرف شو مش متاكد من رايك انا خليني اقول لك نوثينج ويل موف حتى اي فاميلي اف زي وونت تو ترافل في حدا بده يجي يقول خلصت هلا بدنا نروح لهون مزبوط ولا لا سو از جونا بوش بيبل فور ديسيجن ات ذا اند يس وي ار ذا فور بات وي هاف ذا انسايد بات ذا واي وي برينج ذم وي برينج مينلي وان او تو ماكس اوكي إلا الأشخاص that they take the assessment, they know where they are, and they put a plan to move. It depends on the situation and the people you deal with. That's why people who know how to change their character with different people based on different situations, these are adapt, adapt, adaptation material. So we're going to move ahead with the slides that we said. Oh, by the way, whoever wants details about the four characters, Please just write your name and email, and I will make sure to send you those slides, okay? But already we explained them, so don't worry, we're not skipping anything. But I'm, I know that we reached eight, and I took your permission for 10 minutes, so I'm still on time. Eh? So this is the S character, and we, we discussed what the S character. This is the C character, we discussed what the C character. And trust and influence. We talked about trust and influence. We talked a lot about it, and we said the art of adaptability. And again, we covered this material. Whoever wants it, definitely we can send it. Do you think the bad? Just give me your email, both I like it. Do you think the character is bad? Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. I myself, in certain situations, I have to take a decision. And keep at I'm here and I'm being democratic. Or I want to be the nice guy, but eventually I have to take a decision. So I have to wear the knee hat. Absolutely. Interesting question. She's saying that two people are from the same character and they are talking and she gave me an example of the D character. What do you think will happen? They will clash. No, unless they allow themselves. I had I'm going to tell you the scenario and that happened in front of me. I had my bad. They can ask about five. They can ask me a serial. They took a decision whether they can a serial or they can take a lot of ten. Great. I like him. Great. My type of material. I'm going to go to Yamin. I'm going to go to Shmeen. This is where we're going to go. Okay. Then we have a decision. Hell, and with the fear, what do you want with finance? Rock the map on the map. What do you want with policies? And what do you want with the other people? Let's take a decision. Let's go on the risk. Okay. Perfect. This is the boom. We're going to do it. Ashta, Ashta, cash flow. Tabaa, we're going to look at the number. 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 We're going to look at even the same character will have to adapt. How do they adapt? And I thank you for this question. They have to adapt their conversation. They have to adapt the way they converse with each other. Yes. Sorry, that's it. Let, let me let me articulate what you said. But you just said that the D has the four. But the S man do you want? Who said? Who said? D, so much dominant. Okay. Yes. 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 The grid, by the way, that uh, are Okay, let me let me take this as an example. This is the grid, Mike. Okay, in my case specifically, and I allow myself to talk about myself. I'm home. Take another person, and an I, the center, who see the center, blah blah blah. I can easily switch. Other people are so much I, with that, so much C. The shudder. And I recruited a person this way. And he was the uh, business operations manager. He's ex-finance. Okay? He comes from the finance. And I recruited him in Dubai for a company that he needs to crunch numbers in the morning and he likes to mingle with people at night. Okay? Majboor, I mean, Khazza, personality, Taba, and all along. Okay? Because he's jumping and all along. But I mean, you know. So eventually, this person had to learn how to adapt with his own styles. Okay? When he's adapted, Personality he at work and his person and his natural style and the uh, all adapted style he should. So we said that people of the same character, how can they adapt to each other and gain trust and influence? There's Conversation. Common interests and goals. At the end, there is finding the common interests. Interest and goals. Perfect. For me to find a common interest with you, what do I need to do? Ask questions. Ana dominant, huh? Dominant. Yeah. Many start to smack it but I have a decision now. And we don't have time to do it. So let's stop. What do we do? I have to find a common ground. She's which character? What are you? Which character are you? I think I'm a dominant as an influencer. Yeah, you're a dominant as an influencer. Great. And you want me which character? Dominant. Dominant. But I'm dominant and he's dominant. But he's also dominant. But he's also dominant. But he's also dominant. All right, I'm not even interested. Okay, perfect. What do you think I need to do in order to find the common ground? Many things we said them during the discussion, and that's what I love about this group. It's like you are highly energetic and you know, you just throw the information and you get to the point. Okay, perfect. Let's go. 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 Let more open on interaction because she's a little bit of an eye, so but they do interact a bit. But you know what? Change the structure. 
I'm gonna give you the secret ingredient. You want to improve that, you want to adapt with people, this is the latest science. This is the latest thing hitting the market now in neuroscience. This is the latest discovery in terms of how our brains operate and the way we need to talk to people. And it's called conversational intelligence. The way we structure our conversation with people. Because it's a proven fact that certain words, but let me qualify that, we need to understand the culture of the people from where they are coming. Okay? Culture, when we're paying. But in the same culture, people, certain words trigger negative emotions. So, it goes to amygdala. So, amygdala should hijack. So, it hijacks his brain, emotions. So, the kind of negative, the emotions are going to flare, it's going to either fight or run away. Correct? Or freeze. Fine? So, the way we do that in conversations with people is that we improve the level of conversation to gain trust. And it all boils down to what? The way I talk to you, correct? It's either I gain trust and you see me as a person who at least you can trust the information is providing or not. In order for us to move on that, we have three levels of conversations. The first level is called transactional. It takes the transactional form. What, do you have, what can you imagine about trans transactional conversation? Ask a question, answer. I'm interested in the question. That's it. Okay? I want to share what I know only. And I answer it. Fine? But I'm not interested to convince you. You ask me, I give you the information. Fine? It's so bad, horizontal. And in coaching, we call this horizontal discussion. So your coach is a hacky mark on question or answer about now content. Your coach is not doing a good job because he's so much on the horizontal side. He's not digging deep. Okay? We move to the second level. Second level about us. It's called positional. Positional conversation. What do you think of positional conversation? Everyone is taking a position. I'm talking. 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 I'm not even open to understand. I'm not even open to listen to the way you want to talk or what do you have to talk about. Okay? What do you expect? Yeah. Positional. Clash. Clash. But what is the third level? It's called transformational conversation. When it's not transformational, we transform. It's give and take. Correct? Ashian, go deeper. Come Number one, understands what he's saying and from where does this come from? What's that perspective which differs from my perspective? What you else? Have, you have to show him that it's a win-win situation, not a win-lose situation. It's a win-win situation. And for me to be able and accept that it's a win-win situation, what do I have to do? Empower. Open my mind and I say, you know what? I want to discover what I don't know. I want to discover. This is a discovery. Okay, the minute that you come and you engage a group and you say, I know what I know, close it, close the phone, Maneta, I'm not gonna listen to anybody, I'm not gonna interact. Okay? So transactional is you allow only you transact information. I ask you, you give me information. You ask me, I give you information, full stop, I'm not even interested to move to the second level. Okay? Positional, I hold my ground. This is my opinion. Full stop. I'm not listening to you. I don't want to listen to you. I don't care to listen to you. What do you think we do? Where the position is? It ends? You can count if you count. Who is it? Who is it? It's a small trick the way you talk to these people. The sense of the humor, you know? Yeah. Some simple meaning. That's what you want? Ah, she says yes, but. You say yes, but you clash. Hey, but I'm not right here. You clash. Yes, and you take you take what they have. You reduce their defenses, and you build on it. You will never be able to build on it without active listening. So I thank you for active listening. Okay, active listening. Yes.
Do you know, do you know the concept of manage your manager? Yes. I had the toughest person to be my good loving uh, boss for a long time. And anything in life, he knows better. We lose, we show him we are losing. Your decision, and these are the facts. Can you imagine how we're going to deal with this person? He owns it, and you are operating with $600 million, and for him, it's 5% of what he owns. Imagine what you can talk to. Eventually, he teaches something about it. You know? All your career is. Can you deal with those people? Yes. You have to crack their defenses. You have to change the way you talk. Is again positional. Definitely is gonna crush me. Was not all I love. You know, I'm not in here. 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 Okay, I'm back in my heart. I'm ready. And this is my position. All right. And if I ask and, and talk, that's no, I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to ask you information about the year. I'm not going to go anywhere because he's not even interested to listen. So what do I do? I have to understand the candy character. Okay. And at home, he's a very high eye socially. Zarami, you know. So it's high eye, this is too much on the deep. So you pass him the information and you tell him I want to consult with you to take the best decision. So I can already decision mine. That's yeah. Now also I have to respect that I do mistakes as well. And I have to know when I go all time. So I might learn from it. And in certain cases I did. Alhamdulillah I would say that I learned a lot from such people. So uh, I'm not saying that he was wrong, but being on the extremely high deal with no compromise, that's wrong. Because we had high turnover rate, and we had to jump in and to mediate with and isolate the culture. And we did a transformation with the person. So conversational intelligence is, is a course on its own. It's something that we need to take a deep dive. But for me to share with you only tips that will allow you to be able to practice it, I can only tell you now, in the short time we have, is the five things that you need to avoid. So our last part will be on the five things that you need to avoid to improve your conversational intelligence. Number one, stop ignoring other perspectives. Stop ignoring other perspectives. Do not say that this is the way I see things. Okay? Two, tell cell syndrome. Tell cell syndrome. Okay? Or tell yen. At the end of the day, what are you trying to do? Force yourself. This is the idea taken. Have an open mind. Accept what other people have. Addicted to being right. Hey, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. But you know what? I'm So what did I do with the active listening? I'm listening to the information. I'm assimilating what? What am I doing? Nothing. Okay? Number four, disengage listener. Eh? Mm -hmm. going down the drain. I'm disengaged. I don't even listen. And the first one is allow emotions to affect your listening. Do not allow emotions to disturb your food. Take a moment. Take a moment. Just step back. Tell people, you know what? I need a moment. Regulate your emotions. Take a deep breath and say, I have to keep an open mind and I need to keep a broad perspective and accept what do they have to say. These five things will allow you to improve your conversational intelligence. This is the way you are going to change the way you talk from I and being I-centric to become we-centric. It's about us and it's not about me. Okay, It's about us engaging this discussion and coming out with a generative learning, with a different learning. This is the idea. Okay, and when you talk we together, that means you are listening, correct or not? Hmm? Eventually, you'll get the buy. -in. So with this, I would conclude my session today, and I am thankful for you to stay even 15 minutes above that, or 16 to be accurate. But I'm available if you have any questions, and thank you again for being here tonight. Thank you.